so welcome everybody um, my name is manish kolkar let me let me take a minute to introduce myself and take you through the through the session plan so strategic sales management is the company i started uh, way back in 1999 and uh, uh, i i'm basically a corporate trainer i passed out of of i am um, been in the pgp program um, in 1995 and uh, and and joined itc from campus so i was selling cigarettes uh, all across the country initially in nagpur initially in uh, delhi then in uh, uh, jammu and then after that in nagpur handling maratwada and khandesh i somehow didn't find the fmcg business too attractive as a as a sales person but then uh, moved on um, uh, came back into my family business started teaching part time one thing led to another and here i am so today i am a corporate trainer come consultant strategic sales management is the name of our company and power negotiating is what we are going to talk about over the next one hour so what's the agenda of the of the session right now um the agenda of the session is um, all right before we start let me just let me just give you an idea of what we're going to do now i am going to give you a quick uh, introduction about the kind of work that we've done and these are the three things that we will talk about in the next um, about 50 60 minutes or so and um, Yes, Vishal. Okay, you don't need to activate your uh, your your camera, so you can switch off your camera. All right. So importance of uh, of negotiation, developing a sound negotiating strategy, uh, standard negotiating tactics and counter tactics, and then there is a special offer for all of you on our e-learning site. All right. So okay, how do I move or hide video? All right. Okay, so these are the clients that we have worked with. We have worked with. We initially started in the IT sector with TCS, and subsequently have done a lot of work as consultants in BFSI, auto, consumer products, pharmaceutical, building construction, industrials, and of course our our favorite sector nowadays, which is telecom. Now, uh, what kind of work do we do? We basically do programs on all of these. Okay, all of these, which is. that we we do sales programs which are basically of two types one is a key account management program which is for b2b sales then there is a channel management program which is what we do for the hulls and the godrej consumer products of the world uh, power negotiating is what we going to talk about today uh, we also do a program on leadership of high potential managers this is not uh, senior people this is for middle level managers who want to go to the next level which is the area manager regional manager profile and uh, Yes, we work with HR, HR to work uh, to develop performance management. All right, so let's start with our okay, with our module okay, on on uh, the importance of negotiation. Now, before okay, before I go further, can I? I'd like to get a feel of um, all right. Um, how? Okay, what kind of what kind of industries are represented in the audience right now? now i understand that there are let me see there are how many people now there are 49 attendees okay that's a large number so what we what we'll do is then we won't go through the question answer thing so guys i'll start the module straight away all right and uh, we'll take our questions towards the end of the module or so right so this is what we're going to do let's start with the importance of negotiation now the first module Okay, let's talk about why for for negotiating is important. Uh, our power negotiating framework talks about preparation. Even though it's the smallest in terms of the boxes size, is the most important part of a of a negotiating strategy. Then we open our positions. Uh, we indicate what we want. We try to understand from the other person what they want. Uh, do a little tactic and counter tactic over here in this stage with arguments uh, and trade offs. we fake compromises and then reach a documentation and agreement on win win all right why learn to negotiate this is the story of most companies what we are all trying to do is if it's a 5 crore business we trying to increase it to 10 crores if it's a 100 crore business we want to take the division to 150 crores and the methodology for most of us is that we try to increase volumes now which means basically if someone is selling if itc is selling let's say 10 million cigarettes it wants to try and increase it to at least maintain it at 10 million cigarettes somebody else is trying to sell uh, 100 boxes of uh, of something is trying to increase it to 110 what happens when we only increase volumes our sales which were 100 rupees assuming selling price remains the same 
sales goes to 110, costs which were 90 go to 99 and profits which were 100 minus 90, 10 rupees now go to 11. So, a 10% increase in volumes simply results in a profit increase of another 10%. But let's take a different strategy. Let's say Samsung sells its mobiles at uh, let's say 15,000 rupees. It tries to increase its selling price while not focusing too much on volumes. Of course, we will do volume increase also, but let's say we try to increase selling price by 10%. What happens? 100 rupees of sales becomes 110. Costs remain 90 and the entire extra increase in selling price that we have obtained goes straight away to the bottom line and therefore our profits tend to double. Now, where is this useful? Unless you are a Flipkart or a Amazon where your, your income is tied more to the valuation of the company and therefore as an organization you will you are trying to increase your asset valuation. They say sales is vanity, profits are sanity, cash flow is reality. So any other setup, which since our incomes are based on a monthly salary, if you are a, if you are in a salary job, or if they are based on profitability of the business, which means if you are if you are an entrepreneur, we should be worried about profitability. We shouldn't be worried so much about simply increasing the size of the business. So if I increase the selling price by 10% and today over the next uh, 45 minutes you will get a lot of ideas on how to do this, our profits straight away double. If you are in the automobile industry, your bought out component will be almost 60%. If I am able to apply the same tactics on the input side, I reduce my costs from 90 rupees to 81 rupees. My profits again, the extra 9 rupees that I am able to negotiate with my vendors and on the raw material and the input side my profits again double and well I should do B and C and my profits will almost triple. This is the reason why we need to focus on improving negotiation skills. Okay, As we discussed most organizations out there uh, if you are at junior or middle levels your income is based on a monthly salary or a bonus and both of which are reduced on the or dependent on the company profitability. Therefore that's the importance of negotiation. All right. Let's look at which industries are doing well on this. At IIM Bangalore, we learned the connection between price and volume in our economics classes. What did we learn? We learned that when price is reduced, what happens to volume? Volume tends to increase. And all of us conceptually believe that this is what is the situation. You look at cooking oil, we did some work with Cargill. Cargill as a company makes Gemini sunflower oil, Nature Press Hata. I sell my product at 92 rupees a kilo. I increase my price from 92 to 95, sales drop 25%. And this is when the total household consumption for cooking oil is barely 5 kilos on a typical month, except during the festival season right now, where the consumption might go to 7 or 8 kilos or so. The amount on the, on the budget, the impact on the home budget is negligible. Even then, we find that categories like cement, categories like steel, categories like cooking oil are extremely price sensitive and therefore tend to follow this triangle path for, okay, for uh, the, the, the way people in these, the sales teams in these companies tend to negotiate. All right, but let's look at, okay, let's look at certain other different industries. Let's look at the automobile industry. Um, the automobile industry is divided into various segments. So if we take um, auto, we start with the nano and the alto, which is the A segment. The average price would be one and a half to two lakhs. We have the wagon R, the I-10 between three and a half to four and a half lakhs. We have the C segment, which is the Swift Desire, the Honda Amaze at uh, six and a half to seven and a half lakhs. We have the Honda City, the Skoda, which is the D segment at uh, eight to 10 lakhs. And then we have the premium, the E-Class and the super premium class. Now standard economic logic says that the A segment should be the largest in volume terms. But if you actually look at the data, you find that the largest is not the A segment, it's actually the B segment. Last so many years, the average size of the B segment out of the total car market, and, and the, in, in India, the car market is growing at, at almost 10 to 15% every year, and we sell almost 3 million cars uh, a year. We find that a full 60 to 65% of the market is the B segment market. What is the message here? The message here is that the, that you don't have to be the cheapest product in the market 
to get the largest volume market share also. Is this unique to auto? And, and we are actually going in the direction of America because this is, and this is not the behavior of a poor country. In a poor country, it follows the, the blue triangle that is at the back. In a, in a developing nation and a developed nation, well, America, the Honda City, and the, the, the Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord have been best-selling best -selling cars, right? Okay, so um, is this unique to auto? Well, not really. So we have a situation where in two-wheelers, mobiles, television sets, entertainment, air conditioners, LED lamps, we have the same situation. India's largest selling two-wheeler once upon a time was uh, the Hero Honda Splendor. The latest data indicates uh, it, it is a match between the Pulsar and the, uh, and the Honda Activa. Now, the price of the Honda Activa is almost 60,000 rupees. The Pulsar is even higher. And you remember our good friends in Bajaj Auto actually moved out of the, of the scooter market uh, with an analysis that, uh, well, the market is not really growing. Again, we find that the cheapest two-wheeler in the market is not the volume set. Same is the case with mobile, same is the case with TVs. Once upon a time, we used to buy 21-inch uh, TVs, the Akai, the large CRT ones. The average price used to be about 14,000. Now, it's almost 25,000, 30,000 is what we spend on a TV. Okay, so what's the, what's the learning from all of these examples? Well, market mein paisa hai. There is money in the market. But it is our negotiation skills, our ability to market, our ability to create a brand that determines how much of that money will come into our organization and into our personal pockets. So in the same mobile phone market, there is an iPhone which if people are craving to buy at, at 75,000 and 1 lakh rupees. There is Samsung that sells between 15 to 40,000 rupees. And Micromax ki halat kharab hai, hai even at 8,000 and 10,000 rupees. All right. So, so the, the idea here is that uh, good negotiators make, uh, okay, so going back to our previous slide, good negotiators end up making a lot of profits. So Apple is a classic example, a, a hugely profit-making machine. And uh, some parts of India are price sensitive. Some parts of India are value sensitive. Ten years back, some people on this list were here. Now, how does this happen? This doesn't happen by itself. If Indians and consumers were leading this change, then all industries would behave in a particular manner. But simply because you find some industries on this side, and clearly value sensitive is how we want our industries and our products to be, then our actions with which we go out into the market, our negotiating strategies with which we go out into the market have to be different. All right. What is that difference? That is what we'll talk about in the... In the, ne in the next part of our course, which is on developing a sound negotiating strategy. All right. Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is that most negotiations uh, tend to look at, you know, most people tend to look at negotiation as a pizza being split up. So the minute somebody else gets a bigger piece, I end up getting a smaller piece. So today what we are going to talk about is that good negotiators don't just split a pizza. That is compromising. That is not negotiating. But what good negotiators do is try to increase the size of the pizza. They act for the long term, not just transactional. So they are not, they're not just interested in achieving their monthly targets or their monthly quotas. They are, the, the assumption that they are making is that you never close a sale. You always begin a relationship. So it's not just a transactional one-off thing. Ye deal ho gaya, bus ho gaya, ye mahine ka target ho gaya, bus ho gaya, ye quarter ka target ho gaya, uske baad nobri.com. No. It's actually a long-term business orientation that people bring to the table. And the point is, therefore, that whatever you are hiding, the other party will eventually come to know of it. So how do we apply this in day-to-day -day behavior? Attitude of win-win is one of our most uh, abused terms in, in, as, as MBAs, of course, along with, along with holistic approach and paradigm shift. So let's talk about some examples here. All right. Um, my father-in-law was the head of uh, the projects division in uh, Blue Star. And uh, they once made a quotation to Lions where they quoted about 9 crore for a, for a large air conditioning order. Now, the example that I'm giving you, and I'm beginning this session with, a, with an example of how even the most cutthroat of negotiators actually apply this principle. And that's what makes them great negotiators. 
Uh, they made a quote of nine crores. Um, they were called to meetings in Ahmedabad. Uh, so uh, the team took a morning flight, landed up over there. Ten o'clock, they reached the Reliance office. They were kept waiting in the office till five p.m. in the evening. At five p.m., the head of procurement, the vice president procurement, calls the the uh, uh, you know calls my uh, uh, my father-in-law and his team inside. And he was the head of the projects division, the vice president there. And he says, "You've quoted nine crore." I want a 30% discount, but I'm quadrupling the volume that I will give you. Now, what would you do? You run. Let's assume you are the head of the projects division. You run a division which last year produced sales of about 80 crores. Now, here is an offer that you are getting: nine crore, 30% discount. So, how much is that? Less, less 2.7 crores. So, let's say approximately six crores. Now, instead of six crores. I'm actually offering you a business of 24 crores, four times the volume. Okay. Now what happened? What happened was the vice president of government of Reliance says that I'll give you 15 minutes to say yes or no, and the offer stands for only only for this time period. Back to the reception. Now they couldn't contact uh, the, the owners of the company at that point in time. So when they came back, it, they, my my uh, my father-in-law said yes. And on the way back to the airport, uh, he managed to contact the owner of the company, the owner of Blue Star, and he asked him, "Look, I mean, if you've given a 30% discount on the offer, on the price, what money are we really going to make over here?" So, uh, okay, so my so my fan says, "One minute, oh, one minute. I just need to, okay, I just need to, I just need to pause over here. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute." Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, all right, cannot hear you now. Okay, Gitanjali. All right, Vishal, you need to just mute your camera because we are getting your camera repeatedly. All right, so sorry, I just looked at the question just now. So it's good for Pajaj to make. Uh, to come again make a comeback in the scooter category well that is for rajiv bajaj to decide the point we are talking about is that uh, you know if he had made a better better product things would have been a little okay things the story might have turned out different but i guess as a strategy they decided to focus on uh, on the okay can you can you can can people hear now is the is have i i am still getting a paused indicator So Shma, can you can 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 I how do I remove this pause? Is we can hear? All right. So Shma, how do I remove this pause uh, button from my? Okay, let me just let me just remove this sir. one minute. I just get back to. Sharing my desktop. One minute. All right. Okay, so let's get back again. All right. So um, I just come back to the Bajaj Auto example. Let me continue with the Reliance example. So, so what? Okay. So what have we? What? So what was the example? Um, nine crore ka business, thirty percent discount, four times the volume. Now this is an example of increasing the size of the pizza. Now, normally, what tends to happen is that we tend to, to we tend to negotiate only on the right side of the menu card. Now, many of you would have been in situations where you quote a hundred dollars for your service, and the other guy starts with sixty dollars. Okay. Now, what happens? Whatever discount you give, what will will come out of your bottom line? Now, we looked at a situation where most companies are around ten percent, five percent, ten percent net profit margin. Which means, if you are giving a five percent, ten percent discount, you are in one stroke actually wiping off. All the profitability of your organization. Now, what is a better way? A better way is to say, sir, आपका मान रखने के लिए मैं दो परसेंट, पांच परसेंट डिस्काउंट दे देता हूँ. But after that, you have to give me something. So if we can look at a higher volume, so instead of buying ten thousand units of a particular product, if we can work out a volume of about twenty-five thousand units, 
I can discuss this and take it to my leaders and let's say and, and this is what and then I can convince them that they should take up this offer. So what happened okay, as a win-win in this particular example? Well, to complete the example, my uh, father-in-law came back to Bombay um, next day morning, calls all his vendors to the office at 10 o'clock and actually does the same thing with his vendors that Reliance did with him. So he called everybody at 10 o'clock, kept them waiting in the reception till 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, he calls them inside and says, I want a 40% discount and I'm quadrupling the volumes. Same thing. Okay? To, uh, what happened was that Blue Star ended up doing about 22 crores of business with Reliance that year. And uh, for a division that uh, was making about uh, 80 crores per year. Okay? So that led to uh, almost a 50% increase. Increase. Okay? increase in the volume. Okay, so this is what we are talking about, which is the difference between you know, playing the game of splitting the pizza to playing the game of increasing the pizza. So how do one, how does one do this? One does this by doing multiple offers with different variables. So how do I do multiple offers with different variables? Price, volume, and payment terms is something that is applicable in all all business situations. So what great what what your procurement team tries to do or are there any questions? No audio again. Okay, wait a minute. What's happening? Again our audio seems to have disappeared. Are you able to hear? Some of you just type yes if you are able to hear. No, you can hear now. Okay, great. So let me okay so let me get back. Yeah. I started hearing my own. See, so I started hearing my own voice on the on the chat. Is there some setup to that? All right, great, great, thanks. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so the first first negotiating strategy that we are discussing is: do not negotiate on price alone. Negotiate on multiple variables. And your strength as a negotiator lies in coming out and being creative with as many variables as possible. And then going back and forth in the form of trade-offs. So volume, price, and payment terms. So what most people try to do, and what most people try to try to believe is that look, he's asking me for a discount. What can I do? What do you answer? You say, sir, आपका मान रखने के लिए मैं दो परसेंट डिस्काउंट दे देता हूँ. But can you look at higher volumes? Your standard payment terms will be 45 days. Your standard payment terms will be in, in certain parts of the automobile industry and in trading, it will be almost 75 to 90 days. Cash down. 3% discount is a pretty standard practice. 50% advance is what you can talk about. Now, um, we gave the example of uh, you know uh, Reliance, which is one of the best negotiators that you can find. This is what they tend to do. They tend to be tough negotiators, but they're also fair. Now, I know that comment may get a lot of uh, unusual responses from everybody, but let's look at some other examples also. Take Bajaj Auto. We were, a, we, were a, we were vendors to Bajaj Auto. They came up with a 45-day payment term. After three months of starting business with Bajaj, I, I used to be an automobile vendor about about 15 years back and my family business used to deal with Bajaj and Telco, Tata Motors, Telco in those days. Now, uh, what used to happen was uh, the standard payment terms were 45 days. After three months, Bajaj says, if you want, you can take a cash discount, give us a cash discount, 2% for every 15 days of early payment that you want. So we immediately started giving a 4% discount and started getting our money in 15 days instead of 45 days. The question that you might ask is, how did Bajaj Auto benefit by giving payments early? I mean, look at it this way. Okay, Bajaj Auto is one of the most cutthroat Marwadi companies out there. Marwadis are, are supposed to be the finest of negotiators. Most people in the purchase department and in procurement believe in paying vendors as late as possible. And here is a company which is actually saying, I'll give you money in advance if you give it to me. Well, what was the benefit? Um, Bajaj Auto is one of the world's most profitable automobile companies. Its, it's profit margin is almost 22%. Now, uh, all that accumulated profit is lying in the form of reserves. It has thousands of crores of reserves. As a public limited company, what can, a, what can Bajaj do with its reserves? It can put them in fixed deposits. It can put them in, in overnight mutual funds. That's it. It can't really do options and futures trading with all that money. So, that money earns barely 8 to 10%, 8 to 9% or so. Now what am I doing? I'm actually utilizing this cash pile that I have and negotiating 4% per month from 
my vendors. That's a rate of return of 48%. This results in far greater savings for the organization and actually is one of the key factors that leads to Bajaj being such a profitable organization. So, you can give low prices, but if you balance it out with payment terms, with superior payment terms, so if you give low prices and and very delayed payment terms, people will stop doing business with you eventually or only the kachara will do business with you after some time. All right. Now, look at the other. Okay, so price, volume and payment terms are the three variables that we can play out with. Now, let's see how creative we can get with this. We once got a, a call from a finance company, one of the largest uh, banks in the country, where they said, look, uh, Manish, you know, we are we are using your your services but we don't know you, we'd like you to do a trial round for us and we'd like you to do the trial round free because the global consulting firms are doing the same same thing and they're doing it free. So we said, look, uh, we are okay if the chairman of the company sits through the workshop and I get a, okay, I, I get a, I get a session which is, uh, you know, I get a, one sec, Vijay, okay, let me answer that question. The session is going to go on for till about 11.15 or so, okay, one hour, one hour is the session. Uh, this is, we got lost about 15 minutes in the beginning, we'll take it till 11.50, okay? What's the time right now? The time is 10.40, okay. All right, so price payment, okay, so references is that uh, you can ask for references from the client and uh, once I take a reference of the chairman of one of the largest banks in the country, I can take that reference to anybody else in the BFSI industry and that's how, okay, that's how it can be a win for me. So what is a trade-off? A trade-off is, that I will give you a discount in price provided you give me more volumes. I'll give you a discount in price provided you give me better payment terms. Um, in the automobile industry, people invest in molds. Uh, the customer subsidizes the machinery purchase. And what can be better than getting taking a loan from your customer itself? You get assured volumes after that. In Godrej Tyson, which makes uh, finger fresh, uh, you know, uh, food, which is, uh, uh, which is, let's say. French fries, okay, French fries. I go to a Spencer's and Spencer says, uh, you know, I, I try to sell my chicken, my real good chicken over there and I quote 120 rupees a kilo and uh, Spencer's response with 95 rupees. They say, I'll give you 95 rupees. They say, look, sir, 95 rupees to mushkil hai, but 120 ka hum 108 rupees a kilo kar sakte hai, but I would also like some display space over here. This is a modern trade outlet. Nobody sells anything. The product is just there. Customer has to come and pick it up. If you don't give me display space, then I can't really sell my product. There's no point in only me selling the product to you. So uh, display space is something which Spencer's, which I negotiate with, and this is called adding a variable to the whole discussion, right? Okay, so this is our first tactic, which is that great negotiators don't just discuss, negotiate on price. They also negotiate on multiple offers and, and they're pretty creative with all of these multiple variables. Let's look at the next, okay, so this, therefore, cost of our, how exactly do I go around quoting? Now, this has an impact, so what should be my quote? Well, let's take an example. You go to a, a grocery, grocery, a sabji wala. You buy aloo, you buy piyaj, uh, you, you buy a whole lot of vegetables and the bill comes to 115 rupees. The grocery wala says, sir, give me 115 rupees. You know what you tend to respond with? <coughs> Sorry. You tend to respond with, rupees mein close kar do. The customer has a tendency to close at the next lower round figure. Now, therefore, if you quote, now, how do we apply this as consumer psychology? Think about it. Think about all the negotiations. If you quoted 11 and a half lakhs for something, chances are the other fellow said, 10 lakh mein close kar do. If you quoted 575, chances are the other guy said 500. Let's close at $500. This is pretty spooky. A lot of consumer psychology happens this way. So then we thought, why not we apply this in our day-to-day -day setups? So we were doing some work with uh, a tile company, and uh, my sales team used to quote 46 rupees a square feet to all the builders for a standard vitrified tile. So what did they do? We figured out, all our builders used to revert back saying 40 rupees me close kar do. So see what's happening. 46 rupees, 40 rupees. Now this is called, okay, this is called Zopa. What is Zopa? Zone of possible agreement. Now when I quote 46 and the builder quotes 40, we have said to Zopa, the negotiation will close in between some 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 point on this on this zone. 
वॉट इज द वर्स्ट दैट कैन हैपन मेरे को चालीस रुपया तो मिलेगा ही वन ऑफ द वर्स्ट थिंग्स दैट वी फाइंड सेल्स पीपल डूइंग इज दैट दे आर दी ओनली वन कोटिंग सो दी अदर डे वी डिड सम वर्क विद बिडी लाइट एंड दे हैव अ कंस्ट्रक्शन केमिकल्स डिवेशन विच डज वॉटर प्रूफिंग सोल्यूशन सो दे कोटेड वन करोड नाउ फर्स्ट मिस्टेक दे कोटेड एक्जैक्टली अराउंड फिगर सो वॉट वी टॉक अबाउट इज इफ यू कोट फोर्टी सिक्स रुपीज द कस्टमर विल हैव अ टेंडेंसी टू ब्रिंग इट डाउन टू फोर्टी But then we figured out who buys tiles in terms of per square feet. People buy tiles in boxes. So if I am selling a box of six tiles, why don't I quote instead of forty six rupees? I quote two hundred and seventy six rupees. The customer will bring it down to two fifty rupees. Now see what's happening. Forty six to forty is asking for a six rupee discount on forty rupees, which is a fifteen percent discount. But two seventy six to two fifty is asking for a twenty six rupee discount on two fifty. Which is almost 10 percent. It's just slightly higher than 10 percent. Extending the logic further, if I am doing interiors of a of a bungalow, I quote 56,000 rupees. We uh, guess what the customer has a tendency to turn around and quote. He says 50,000 will close. Karto. So your opening offer should never be a round figure. It should always be inverse of bata price. Bata price 99 rupees 90 paisa. 19 rupees 50 paisa is bata price flipkart does it all the time amazon does it all the time but bata were the guys who initially started so the opening offer should be bata price coming to the next point which is zone of possible agreement this construction chemicals division quoted 1 crore for a hospital waterproofing project the customer says discount do discount do discount do this company does a lot of internal negotiation 10 days later gives a quote of 95 lakhs Now see what is happening. Again, the customer says 95 lakhs. नहीं है, बहुत ज़्यादा है. Or discount दो, or discount दो. And what does the company do? The company gives a quote of 90 lakhs. Now look at the two mistakes that is the three mistakes that this company has made. First is that it has started and quoted a round figure of one crore. Second, so one should never quote a round figure. One should quote slightly higher than the round figure. The second thing is no zopa has been set. First, the company quoted one crore. Then it's quoting 95 lakhs. Then it's quoting 90 lakhs. The company is doing the incredibly stupid thing of negotiating with itself. Okay, what can be so? What 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 can be stupider than that? The third point is the concept of tapering discounts. The first discount, one crore to 95 lakhs. How much is that? Five lakhs. The second discount, 95 lakhs to 90 lakhs. Again, five lakhs. You are giving equal size discount. What happens when you give equal size discounts? You are actually sending the message across to the other person. Thoda aur negotiate karo, me aur five lakh discount de dega. Sometimes we give increasing discounts. So one crore to ninety five lakhs, ninety five lakhs to eighty five lakhs. What is happening? The customer is getting greedy. You are actually feeding blood to the tiger. What is the right way to give discounts? Tapering discounts is the way to go. So. If you decide one crore, even assuming, let's say you give a round figure, and you decide your walkaway price is ninety lakhs, then you should give discounts in the where the discounts keep tapering as they go along. So, ninety one crore to ninety lakhs can go with ninety six lakhs, ninety three lakhs, ninety one lakhs, ninety lakhs. This is called tapering discounts. All right. So these are our eight tactics of a of. Uh, Uh, of of is of of you know two tactics that we have discussed in terms of what should be opening price. Now um, I'd like to okay, do a, make a point on risk minimization, which is that if you are in any setup, the idea is that you should not be dependent on any particular customer or any particular industry. So we did some work with a, a pharma company which gets sixty uh, percent of its business from just two hospitals in Tamil Nadu. now they asked us how do we negotiate with these two hospitals well we turned around and said look you can't negotiate with these two hospitals none of the concepts that we are talking about are actually applicable to you because you don't have the courage to walk away from any of these businesses power in a negotiation comes when you have the ability to walk away so how do i how do i bring opening price into my how do i operationalize the concept of risk minimization let us look at the industrial risk that a company may face you might be a simple manufacturer of plastic tubes you might be a okay uh, uh, you might you might be a, a hotel let's say you are doing 40 to 60% of your business with pharma right now i make a vision for 2018 saying i want to take my pharma exposure from 60% to 40% and 
and I want to increase automobile exposure from 5% to 20%. If Pfizer calls up and asks for a quote, you don't actually say no. But it's not part of your strategy to develop pharmaceutical business. So what do you do? You quote a little higher. So you adjust these positions of opening ideal and walk away position based on the risk minimization approach. But if today Bajaj Auto calls up and says, look, I want to do business with you, then you quote a little lower because what have you got? You want to do business with the automobile sector and therefore you keep your pricing low. So this is the third parameter that has an impact on what should be your opening price, which is that your risk minimization is a strategy that needs to be decided in advance. It is more important to grow slowly and steadily rather than to have lumpy growth. We see a lot of meteors in the business right now. They grow very fast and then they fizzle out after some time. Okay. All right. So um, these are the three points that we will cover in the risk minimization uh, strategy. Let me just check uh, question answers. Okay. So question answers. Um, okay. Vijay, this session is supposed to go on till about 11.15 or so. Okay. You got your feedback form over here. We're done with about half of the session right now. Let's now look at the next part of the session, which is standard negotiating tactics and counter tactics. Now, I have very quickly covered only half of only three of the seven tactics that we normally cover. The remaining four tactics are available on our e-learning course, and I'm going to subscribe you for free to that course. That's going to happen about 30 minutes later. So let's enjoy the rest of the session. The rest of the session that we're going to talk about is standard negotiating tactics and counter tactics. What is a tactic? A tactic is something which your procurement fellow does with you. A tactic is something which your customer does with you. Counter tactic is what you respond with. So tactic number one, always ask for a little more than what you can hope to get. Let me take an example. You quote 75 rupees, your competitor quotes 100 rupees less 20% discount. He quotes 80 rupees. You've quoted 75 rupees. You might think 75 is a no-brainer. You will always get the business. You know what? You may not get the business. If you're talking to a procurement head, Understand people in organization, see if you're talking to the owner of the company, <clears throat> it's a no-brainer. He will buy 75. But many times if you're buying, a, if you're talking to an employee of an organization, employees behave the way we pay them to behave. So, you know, measure strike performance is what HR people tell us all the time. So, if I am measuring an, a procurement fellow based on the extent of discounts that he's given, you see, what does the head of procurement ask his procurement uh, managers? Vendor ke pehle court se tumne discount kitna negotiate kiya. It's actually seen as a very macho thing to give, you know, to negotiate, to pull down the vendor as much as possible. So if you're not experienced in this game, you will have a tendency to quote 75 rupees and you think it's a very reasonable price. People should accept it just like that. But well, two reasons. If you are talking to procurement, they get evaluated by the extent of discounts that they've negotiated. The market is also spoiled by the fact that large parts of the construction industry give discounts ranging from 50 to 70 percent also. So when you quote, the least that they expect is some 10 or 20 percent. Now you can't change the market. Therefore, what you should do is your first offer should never be your best offer. That's one. Factor in 10 percent, 20 percent more and then give your first offer. The second point is what do you do when somebody else quotes? Well, let's say you wanted 100 rupees as an ideal price. The customer says, normally we pay 80 rupees for this. Swing an equal step to the other side of your ideal position. What does that mean? It means 100 is what you wanted, 80 is what your customer quoted. Let's say he quoted first, 100 minus 80, 20 rupees, 100 plus 20, 120 rupees. This is a counter tactic. Swing an equal step to the other side of your, okay, of your standard, of your ideal position. Now, all this is fine if your Zopa is reasonable, if you get what you want. What do you do if you get a ridiculous offer from the other side? Well, um, if you get a ridiculous offer from the other side, what happens? Let's take an example. Um, ridiculous offer is that uh, Mahindra and Mahindra Kandivli plant. Uh, the union goes to the HR and says, sir, last year alu was 10 rupees, today it is 30 rupees. Uh, sugar was 10 rupees a kilo, today it is almost uh, 25 rupees a kilo, you know, Tur Dal is 85 rupees a kilo, 
give us a 300 percent increase in labor charges what does the union do ridiculous first offer how does the management respond respond with an equally ridiculous counter offer so what does the management do the management says ek kaam karte pura ka pura factory band kar dete hain we will transfer all the production to hyderabad there is a plant of mahindra in hardwar there is a plant of mahindra in uh, outside zahirabad okay, uh, some 120 kilometers outside of hyderabad so they say we'll transfer the entire production over there so what has happened ridiculous offer ridiculous counter offer nothing happens for the next 15 days then the workers start saying kya tum okay company band karne ka baat karta hai so the management response tumko bhi sharam nahi aayi ke ridiculous offer dete ho to bolo na kitna doge so this is the 30% to dena padega said nahi fir 500 log nikalne padenge vrs se after a whole lot of fruits and vegetables discussion a 6% increase in labor would be given and 250 people would be removed on vrs this plant in kandivli once upon a time had 10000 people today it has barely I have about less than 3000 so this is how one response think of the most ridiculous offer that you have got maybe you quoted 100 dollars your client started with 60 dollars what can you see most of the time we get angry we get emotional we get personal sir 60 rupees dena hai na sir mere ko naukri de do main ek hafte pe main kar lega ye to mere ko de do vendor wo main hi khareed lega what you should do is simply transfer do what kung fu panda did in the movie what he does is he gumaws the whole thing and puts the offer back into the other guy's court somebody starts with 100 dollars he he responds with 60 dollar you say sir this is possible provided you give me 2 years advance payment now it's his job to respond usko sharam nahi aayi to make a ridiculous first offer tumko kyun sharam aa rahi hai when he is responding to that first offer okay all right uh we can take questions a little later on this okay let's look at the next set of tactics higher authority higher authority is if you make a big sales pitch to someone when you exchange visiting cards it said vice president on that guy's desk after some time you realize that you are talking to the senior most flunky in the company higher authority is when your other fellow responds my boss will never agree to this my my uh, you know my my board will never agree to this this is a ridiculous offer i cannot take this to my boss my boss doesn't even know that his name is being used like this but it's a pretty common thing now many times uh, it it therefore makes economic sense to not position yourself as a decision maker during negotiations because then you can't use the higher authority we've seen many small businesses write ceo on their visiting cards what happens when you write ceo on your visiting cards straight away the procurement guy will say acha sir mere ko 40% discount do because here is the senior most person in the company he has the highest authority on making this call how do you respond to higher authority you respond to higher authority with a own higher authority even if you are in your own business you can always say my directors will never agree to this my partners will agree, never agree to this and you might be running a husband wife startup and your director might be you know, and your board meetings might happen with your wife uh, you know, over lunch and dinner no one will ever ask you but if you people actually ask who are the directors in your company so higher authority is responded to by responding with a higher authority of your own let's look at the next thing a version of higher authority is good cop bad cop be very careful of good cop bad cop whenever you are talking to two people on the other side so what do you end up experiencing you will experience that there are okay you will experience one minute huh? and you'll experience okay so we got uh, just making sure that i'm on okay i'm on i'm on track for time we have about 15 more minutes to go in this session so all right good cop bad cop is a version of uh, of uh, higher authority where one person plays the good cop and the other person plays the bad cop so what does the bad cop do you see you send a quote of let's say a million dollars for a particular negotiation the guy says well what nonsense are you talking about man we can buy this for 600000 dollars that guy is playing the bad cop maybe he makes a big scene maybe he shouts maybe he yells okay maybe he says look i am talking to 10 other vendors he he taunts you he he gets personal with you how many years have you been in business do you really have a quality certification do you have gst certification also these are standard insults that are given by large companies to small businesses or sometimes to sales people good cop bad cop 
can it be managed okay one thing is the first thing that you have to understand is think of the most insulting experiences that you have had as in in negotiation now what i'm going to tell you is that you are taking it personally you not it it's a game understand that there was a game being played with you then you got played like a piano and you are the piano point out the tactic introduce a bad cop of your own real or imaginary a variation point out the tactic somebody says look we can buy this at 600000 dollars sir i understand you are playing this good cop bad cop routine with me but here is the googly that you can give the googly that you can give is sir uh, actually you are doing it all wrong and you immediately find the other guy taking a bait now the way it's supposed to be done is that the senior guy is supposed to play the good cop the junior guy is supposed to play the bad cop now this flies against conventional logic in 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 police interrogations you always see the senior guy playing the bad cop but what's the advantage okay the advantage is that when the senior guy plays the good cop the junior guy continues to get the respect of the vendor because of his behavior the senior guy continues to get the respect because of his designation what does that mean it means when you go with your boss you play the bad cop your boss plays the good cop when you go with your team member you play the good cop your junior plays the bad cop so this is good cop bad cop let's go further personal attack personal attack do you have gst registration tumhara quality certification hai kya do you even have an office ya ghar se hi operate karte ho personal attacks you indians are so lazy counter tactic is point out the tactic sir that was a very rude statement that you made agree with the feeling not with the statement what are feelings anger frustration sir i understand your frustration i believe you have dealt with multiple vendors like me uh, you know of my size and i believe some of us have let you down because of our quality our lack of orientation towards quality however we are not like that i do agree with you that many other vendors of my size are not so oriented towards quality and processes but try us out we are different so the whole idea is to not take a personal attack personally all right the next point discount now and we will give you larger orders later this is a pretty common tactic this is pata na gabbar singh ke pistol mein teen goliyan thi purchase ke pistol mein this is the first goli give us a discount right now and we will give you large orders later the main time you will find their buyer data is floating around in nokri.com but they still go on making offers like this so how do you respond you are supposed to protect yourself so what do you do you buy staggered discounts meaning what you buy 10 get one free so let's bill 100000 dollars for the next 10000 dollars i will bill you only a token amount of 1000 dollars so staggered discount is that you 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 get the volume commitment okay and give the discount only when the volume commitment is being met right okay standard negotiating tactics reluctant seller reluctant buyer sometimes as on the selling side we tend to you know we tend to uh, chase the customer too much uh, many times we uh, we we put ourselves down by the way we ask for simple things like meeting so sir aap mere ko kabhi bhi bula lo main ke main you know main i will always be available you can call me any time so a more smarter way is to is to to not show your desperation to the customer so how does one do this sir how does your calendar look uh, tuesday afternoon wednesday morning your own calendar might be totally totally free you are available all the time hardly any meetings but uh, here's a point well you don't have to communicate your your desperation so how do you handle reluctant seller reluctant buyer you tend to do the same um the next um, okay what seems to be the question here in cadbury an example of negotiation it started with 39 after it was successful it reduced its price to 35 or is this an example of pricing as the volume of product was rising because of huge consumption no well okay uh, this could be different uh, this could be multiple reasons for this there could be a competition there could be competition that is coming in or there could be uh, a target pressure so we saw many times companies will have a volume target they want to keep their factories uh, busy they may also have a profitability target that starts coming in after 6 months so a lot of companies uh, price themselves a little higher skim the market first then as the product settles down their own supply chain settles down the the vendors get set the the pricing strategy gets set the branding gets set they tend to reduce prices later on all right i hope i answered that question okay 
all right continuing constant grinding asking for more and more what is this constant grinding means um, the customer agrees okay done sir we will do business next one year we will give you 40 days of uh, of consulting done next day the customer calls up and says yeah actually there is a small problem say what so wo apne 30 days payment term dala hai we don't give 30 days normally we give 60 days what can be done about it so your heart sinks after some time you say Chalo, yes okay sir take it 60 days ka to. two days later again the customer will call up you have said uh, you know gst extra actually we take inclusive of gst prices from everybody it's becoming very difficult sir the client will not pay this you know, the, our, our, our finance department will never agree to this then uh, transport you have written transportation extra but now you know what we generally expect the vendor to only give the transportation so see what is happening okay what is happening is that your initial price which was say 100 rupees now you had said 100 rupees plus travel ex transport extra plus taxes extra plus yeah, payment term 30 days now payment term 30 ka 60 days ho gaya. one and a half percent is gone from your margin transport costs are two percent another two percent is got in the margin but now you are emotionally committed so constant grinding asking for more is something that we need to be very alert with what do you do you say trade off sir very good actually that you are saying 60 days over but then you need to give me volumes which are at least twice of what you are giving right now so ask for something and immediately start tapering the discounts okay next set of counter tactics is this issue of low budget now whenever people say we don't have a budget for this most of us get very scared and start dropping our prices there is a set of differences. So what exactly is the budget that you have for this? How did you arrive at this budget? Most of the time budgeting processes are pretty standard back of the envelope calculations in most companies. Explain value, talk to someone of higher authority. You will find an assistant manager having a budget of 50,000 rupees. You'll have a manager having a budget of 1 lakh. You'll have a, a assistant general, a general manager having a budget of 5 lakhs. Talk to someone of higher authority, scale down the specs to match the budget. Adjust on some other variable share costs. Okay, so these are tactics that we talk about. All right, so um, I guess we got about 10 more minutes uh, to cover in the entire uh, you know program. I have. Okay, I, let me take. Okay, let's let's take this last one and then we'll throw the dice open for questions. Uh, competitive comparison. What is competitive comparison? Your competitor is giving okay, 60 you know 60 rupees. You quote 100 rupees. Your competitor is giving 70 rupees. How do most of us respond? Most of us, okay, now here, what can we do? Sir, actually, you know what? Uh, I know our, suppose you say something like this. I know our prices are somewhat high, but you know what? My leaders don't agree. They think purchase is tumko bullu banata hai. If it is possible for you to share that quote with me, I will take that quotation to my leaders and try and get better discounts for you. Now two things can happen. One is that your customer will never give you the, the quotation also. Why? Because nine times out of ten it's a topi, it's a smoke screen, there is no competitor quote. But on the tenth occasion, when there is a competitor quote, and if you ask politely, mind you the whole idea is not to challenge the customer over here, but to politely ask for proof. We ensure that it is an apple to apple comparison, okay, and then trade-offs. You will be surprised you will find that it is not an apple to apple comparison. The customer may have given a price which is 70 rupees, but he would have given a, you know, you have given a payment term which is 100% advance. Nobody will tell you that 100% advance payment term was there. So you actually come to know how your competitors are quoting, which is something very difficult to find out. And there are of course learnings over there. All right, um, last uh, tactic, uh, I am your friend, usually happens over drinks. So after four pegs with the customer, after you close a deal, but before the purchase order is issued, the customer will say, Chalo, let's go out and celebrate. And you will get, okay, you will get drunk and you will have four pegs and the customer will politely ask you, so how's business? And you'll say, sir, kya batao, sir, kuch nahi hai, aapne bacha liya, you saved me, otherwise, you know, market is down, there is hardly any business happening. You will notice the customer is not drinking, he is listening very carefully. Next day morning, he comes in and says, yeah, you know what, there's a problem. I need to... You know, we need to revert back, uh, you know, this quote, my, my business head, you know, he's a very painful guy, but he's not, he's not agreeing to this. So he uses good cop, bad cop, along with the combination of, I am your business friend. So 
so pro and beyond card okay so uh, i guess it's time to throw the guys open for questions so we've got about five more minutes in the session so let's take that okay let's take that this i'll share this meeting i'll share this ppt with you uh, here is the offer for everybody uh, please go to this website right now this offer is available only for the next two hours so okay all right so can we have uh, can we have questions on the chat okay we have another we have about 10 minutes for the questions five ten minutes uh, just type out your question or uh, perhaps we can activate your mic also okay while the questions are being typed out everybody please log in to our website which is uh, strategic sales management dot com this is our e-learning site there are multiple courses on this site because you have participated in today's course which is called negotiating 101 we are giving you a free access to this course lifetime access your what you have to do is click on the dollar option there is a dollar option and there is a, a, a rupee option on the landing page of the course so you have to go to the course power negotiating 101 which is the first course on the home page all right let me just let me show you the home page right now so this is our home page click on power negotiating 101 do view course and you will come okay, you will come to a all right you will come to a view course thing let me just open the powerpoint again yeah click on the dollar option buy 99 dollar okay and you will need to register your account with a linkedin uh, either the linkedin or okay, or or enter your name and email id and then you will be taken to a payment page where you will have a have a coupon in green okay this will be in green check it out okay have a coupon in green enter imb offer and you will get a hundred percent discount there are some social sharing buttons on the site please uh, log into those social sharing buttons and share this page with your friends all right okay any questions what must be the pricing strategy for a new startup for software products okay all right um the first thing that you must to okay, get up is your first objective is to survive as a business growth comes secondary so the first objective now survival can be two things one if you are a funded startup then uh, survival is a function of getting uh, getting x number of eyeballs or get x number of registrations on the site uh, or, or you know or, so you can actually give your product away free a very basic version of the product free and then start charging your your first objective is to drive usage of the site if you are a self-funded startup then it makes sense for you to stay small go to large customers b2b customers actually the biggest in the business and get some marquee logos which means if you get an ibm you get a microsoft you get a hindustan lever uh, airtel uh, and and say that yes this is this is what uh, is my is my uh, is my product and my product is actually being used by airtel then you can go to other players in telecom and say look airtel is using my products so you can actually give it at a very low price to airtel and then you will then start making your profit from other ones other, other from the other customers so this is your answer the answer to the pricing strategy all right any more questions We went from 14, 59 to 60 students just now. I mean, somebody logged in just now, right? Okay, so this is my. Uh, so does that? Uh, all right. How to price for the category creators startup as there might be less competitors to refer. Vijay, you'll have to explain your question. Sushma, can we activate Vijay's mic so he can ask the question verbally? Oh, uh, one second, sir. Let me try. One second. Is it Vijay Kumar L or uh, who, sir? One minute. There are Vijay Kumar L, Vijay, Vijay Kumar. Three are. 
Vijay Kumar, there are three Vijay Kumars. Vijay, can you type out your full name on the chat so Sushma can also see it and we can activate your mic. Okay, while Vijay does that, let me answer, let me ask Pratibha, can you repeat the good guy, bad guy concept? Okay, all right. So the good guy, bad guy concept is that whenever you're talking to two people, um, you you talk about, when you, when you talk to two people, you will find that one of them behaves very politely and assertively and friendly with you. The other guy tends to be very aggressive. Now, what I want you to understand is that it, this, is a, this is a part of a design. It's not as if one guy is very nice to you and the other guy is a pain in the, okay, in the, in the backside. It's that, that this guy is, they are actually playing a game. The whole strategy is to put pressure on you by, by one guy being aggressive, but by still maintaining the relationship so that you give that discount. So that's good cop, bad cop. How do you handle it? You point out the tactic. You say, sir, I understand you're playing this good cop, bad cop routine with me, but henceforth, whatever you say, I will attribute it to the other person also. The second is what you can always do is bring a bad cop of your own. So you say, my boss will never agree to this. My investors will never agree to this. My partners will never agree to this. I am also answerable to people people in your own uh, in your own uh, let's say in, in your own industry that kind of thing okay adding a variable you spoke about adding a variable other than pricing what all variables can there be there okay price volume payment terms packaging costs um, uh, see what you can do is if you're carrying a product add a service component to it if you're selling a service add a product component to it so I sell training services what do I add a product in I add access to my e-learning course. I give books. I give my own books free. If you're selling a product, say if you're selling, you're selling a laptop, add in a one-year uh, annual maintenance contract. So, and then what you can do is, once you have seven, eight parameters on the, you know, you can add a free test. You can add a free on-site consultation one month later, two months later, three months later. And, uh, you know, and, and then trade-offs is that, uh, the negotiation on the right side of the menu card is barely two to three percent. After which you start knocking off the parameters on the left side of the menu card. So, um, first choice when I bought my used car from Mahindra First Choice, they said, "Look, they they sold me a Honda City for some seven and a half lakhs, and they said we'll give you two years warranty free." I got the price down to six lakh seventy five thousand. They said, "I said I don't want the warranty because I know it's a Honda City. Nothing happens to the vehicle, right?" Okay, so uh, Uma, please share your experience of having a very tough negotiation. Well, there was an IT company that we dealt with uh, recently, and uh, but I, I'll, I'll give you an example. See, why are people tough? People are tough because a their industries are going through trouble. So right now, for example, the entire telecom industry will be a tough negotiator. It's not actually making any money. So there is huge pressure on everybody in the telecom industry to bring down costs and the vendor costs are the easiest to bring down. You don't have to, you just have to you know, take a firm stand. So sometimes uh, uh, toughness in a negotiator is a function of uh, the industry situation. Sometimes it is a company situation. So for example, when Siemens was making a 500 crore loss, there was massive pressure on everybody in Siemens to cut, to bring down costs. Now here the solution is what we discussed in the risk minimization approach. In general, it makes sense to do business with people where their industries are doing well and the company is doing well. They will not be so price sensitive. They will be more value sensitive. So ICIC Bank was a great uh, place to work with till 2006. But after Chanda Kocher comes over, the organization starts looking at cost cutting. It starts focusing on profitability. And yes, the a whole lot of people didn't get the prices that they that they experienced. Okay, best tactic to use, JS Krishna. All right, I think this will be the last question that we will take. So, what's the best tactic to use when your vendor operates in an area of minimum competition is practically a monopoly? <laughs> okay, um, you should develop an in-house capability to to do the same thing simultaneously. That will make sure, so, so Mahindra and Mahindra used to buy a particular part from uh, a French company. And uh, what they told the French company was that, uh, look, we're going to buy this part now. In, and uh, simultaneously, they also got into a technological agreement with a German company to start manufacturing the same plant, the, the same part. 
Now, that was done purely uh, to keep the original vendor in check. There was no actual plan to start doing that. But this is how you can handle monopoly. Our negotiating power in a monopoly situation is, is very low. So the, the the solution is to actually to 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 actually get out uh, you know to to develop an alternative as quickly as possible. The second point is you should just buy out that monopoly company. That's that's more a strategic uh, okay strategic answer. Okay, price negotiations with my clients include requests to share sensitive parts of the technology, mostly to either steal tech or further bring down the price by saying anyone can do this. What's the big idea? How do they counter it? In relation to a hardware technology startup here. All right. Um, Non-disclosure agreements is one. The second is you can you can straight away say no, or what you can do is quote a much higher price, saying that this is what we can do if you want us to share this particular technology with you. So you just quote extra. It's called deterrent price. Yeah, I, I once uh, I, I once shared a training program with an IIM Ahmedabad professor. And uh, you know you you had this IMA professor who was a you know who was who was an expert on futures and options and you know the kind of work that he was doing was a simple finance for non finance kind of a program. So I asked him how did you end up you know how did you end up doing this workshop? So he said, have you heard of a concept called deterrent pricing? So the deterrent pricing is that you quote a ridiculously high figure, not because you actually want to do the sale. It's actually because you want to deter the other fellow from actually buying from you. Either you don't want him to ask that question. So. But the danger you run is you make sure your deterrent pricing is actually a deterrent pricing. If the customer says yes to that deterrent pricing, then you have to share your technology. But then there's no harm over there because uh, in the technology field, you are actually, if your R&D setup is very strong, in any case, uh, three months later, that technology is not worth too much. Okay, I guess, uh, Sushma, uh, how much time Answer. do we have? Yeah. How much time do we have? Because the questions are coming in. Tell me I think how much time. Okay, there are more questions, is it, sir? Yes, yes, there are more questions. Let me. I think take you a... can go and uh, and tell. Yeah, it's okay. You okay, can okay, so okay. Yeah. All right, so let's take Ashwin's question. Price negotiations with my client include request to share. Okay, we answered this. Anyone can do this. Let's take the Bajaj example from Gitanjali. Gitanjali, let me just go ahead. I let's let's take others also. Uh, it's up to them, stopping them to make a comeback in the scooter category. No, okay. If you listen to, all right. Let's let's hear what uh, what uh, uh, Bajaj is doing. Uh, if you do a YouTube search on uh, on uh, Rajiv Bajaj videos, you'll come to quite a few videos where uh, there's one particular video where he has spoken as a keynote speaker in an ASCOM summit. Then he has actually listed out his strategy for Bajaj. He said, look, uh, the 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 scooter market is millions of vehicles. The two-wheeler market is also millions of vehicles. So we can't be number one in both. So we'd rather be a small player, a, a big player in one particular segment. And Bajaj decided a few years back that they would want to focus on the motorcycle segment. So that's the strategy. Uh, we have taken that example more in the context of that uh, that that uh, if you if your product has value, the customer will pay for that value. That was the idea. So uh, in, in, in scooters, clearly, technologically wise, but scooters weren't at the top of the ladder. They weren't perceived to be a high quality uh, vehicle. In fact, there was a joke that Bajaj engines will never go into an aircraft because you always have to tilt a Bajaj scooter to start the vehicle. You know, for those of us who have done that in the past, you can't tilt an aircraft engine. So therefore, uh, you know, the Bajaj vehicles, Bajaj engine never went into aircraft. That was the joke. But this was more a strategy example from Bajaj's point of view. But I guess from, from our point of view as negotiators, if your product is good, you will find a way to communicate the value of that product and that's how the customer will pay you extra money for it. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get back to our, uh, to our, uh, uh, to our thing. This is, this is our site. So um, this, this option will be open till, uh, till today. You've got uh, you you've got another another ten odd hours twelve hours to log in into this and use this offer. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, since you've got the free offer, uh, please help us uh, reach out to more people. If you need corporate training for your company or for your team of people, do let me know. My mail ID is uh, Manish at Direction One Online dot com. 
I am based in Mumbai. This is my mobile number. And uh, yes, okay. and and feel free to get in touch with me. Okay, thank you very much. Sushma, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Sushma. Hmm. Sir, you can just share that website link in the chat window, sir, so that anyone can copy paste. Um. But website, okay. uh, you have to put in there this thing, no? I so you can that. just copy paste into the chat, uh, so that they can copy paste and use it. Okay, I'll do that right now. Okay, so this is gone to everybody, or is it gone to only you? So you have sent to chat with all the attendees, no? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I will just. I have to send to. Host presenter and all panelist, attendees. right? No, all attendees. So you have to select. I have to send it to all participants. Okay, participants. Yes, yes. All right. So to all participants, uh, strategic sales management dot thinkfig dot com. You have to buy the course. Uh, uh, let me just okay, let me just share this whole thing over there. Yeah. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to create an account. You have to click on the course Power Negotiating 101. Create an account using LinkedIn or enter your name, first name, last name, and email ID. And then on the payment page of the dollar pricing, you have to apply the coupon IMB offer, all small, and you will get a hundred percent discount for the course. Okay, everybody. I think that uh, concludes the power negotiating webinar. So thanks a lot, Sushma. Thanks a lot. I am Bangalore, and thank yeah. you all. Thank you all participants for uh, okay for being very patient listeners. Um, you know where to. I'll just put down my contact details also on the chat, and uh, okay, and you can. So uh, one just one request to all participants. There is a feedback form on your chat. Please fit, go and fill it. No, it just takes five minutes of yours. Sure. So, so everybody, please, for, yeah. please give us the feedback uh, for how we did. Okay. So we we we'll fine tune the tech issues a little. We we'll we're getting the tech issues sorted out as we go along. On the content side, also, if there's something more that you want, do let us know. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. All the best. Enjoy your weekends.